Hello everyone, welcome to our conversation. Uh, we are together, myself, Mololua, and I'm joined by two wonderful guests. Um, today we're going to be talking about something quite interesting, but before we delve any further in to what we're going to be talking about, I want our guests to introduce themselves. And this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to ask you to say your name, and then I'm going to ask you to introduce the other person in three words, or to describe the other person in three words. So, uh, the the lady in our midst will describe <laughs> the man in our midst in three words after saying her name, and the man in our midst will dis will say his name and describe lady in our midst in three words. So, ladies first. Sure. Um, I would describe this person as. I don't kind. know what your name is. Oh, <laughs> am I not describing the? Okay. So what's well, your my name? Is Bolu. Yeah. My name is Bolu, and I would describe this person as kind, um, selfless, and and friendly. Those are the three words I'd use. Yeah, kind, selfless, and friendly. I think those are quite nice words. So. <laughs> are they true though? Yeah, for sure. Why not? Nice, but are they true? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the nice. The kind, sorry, the kind, selfless, and friendly person. Can you reveal yourself and then describe Bolu in three words? Um, I'm Nonsu, and I describe Bolu as, um, I say she's proactive, bold, and funny. Ah, I'll take that. <laughs> I want to get involved now. Anyway, this man is not about me. So we can see that these guys clearly think very highly of each other. Like I say, I don't know how true this is in real life, but. <laughs> We'll just go with it. Um, hi, Volume and Nonso. Thank you guys so much for taking time to join this evening. So we're just going to jump straight in. We're going to jump straight in. And we're really going to be talking about something that is very common amongst, to be honest, every single human being. But in the younger generation, I feel like we're right in the thick of it. Um, we're going to be talking about something that almost every young Christian, I think, or teenager generally faces at some point. Um, and that's peer pressure. So we just want to really discuss how we are able to stay true to ourselves, especially being people of faith and people of values, um, especially when everyone around us seems to be sort of behaving in a certain kind of way or seems to be going in a different way, maybe to the way that we, we want to go. So that's where we're going to be sort of talking around today. And I think the Bible verse that we can probably use to anchor our discussion to have in mind when we're talking about this is from Romans 12 and that is Romans 12 verse 2 which I'm sure you guys know which says don't be conformed to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that's what we're going to be talking about today um, and with that Romans 12 2 says once you are transformed with the renewing of your mind then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is whether that's good pleasing and the perfect will of God. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. So I guess I want to start off by asking you guys a little bit about peer pressure in this generation. As Gen Z, what does peer pressure look like? Nonce. Um, I'd say peer pressure isn't as um, overt as it may seem to the older generation. I feel like it's in the small things. It will be in things like if you're in a conversation and even if the way you're thinking, like if you kind of stand outside the box and have a different viewpoint, you're kind of just like looked at weirdly or it's, it's not a big thing of, oh, why do you think different? Like you may not be called out on it, but the vibe might just change and you realise, oh, okay. And then you kind of either back down and you just agree with everyone else or you stand by your point. Okay, thank you. So well, from what I've heard, you say peer pressure can be implicit. It's not always explicit. Um, it can be covert. It's not always overt. Yeah? Okay, thank you. Bolu, what do you think? I would definitely agree about peer pressure being more covert. And I would also say, as my opinion, that nowadays peer pressure is a more internal process than external, whereas people are less likely to like say or act differently around you if you're not conforming to whatever it is that they're engaging in. I think it's more internal because the person who is feeling the peer pressure tends to like overthink or maybe they don't want to be around me anymore or things like that. So I would say it's more internal because peer pressure is usually caused by people thinking, should I just do it? And they might like me more. But the other people around them 
aren't necessarily saying or acting in a particular way in a particular way that could show this so I would say it's more internal and it's caused by like a type of like thinking and maybe overthinking or like lack of security in the kind of person so yeah I would say it's more internal than external basically okay thank you so from what I hear you both saying then peer pressure doesn't really sound like what it used to to me anymore so because you're both kind of saying that like it's not in your face so if nobody's saying it are you saying that people are thinking it but not saying it they're thinking that you're like strange but they're not saying it or are they just not thinking it at all um i'd say they still think it but okay. it comes across more in body language and behavior more than verbalized okay. so i feel like as a generation we're very careful with the words we use and the things we say so people move more towards behavioral ways of shunning people and so it's not like it's not something it's like it's hard for you to call out because you can't pinpoint an exact thing oh i see so it's kind of given like microaggressions kind of thing where you're like you can't even say they did this to you because yeah it's, yeah oh, I see what you mean. okay do you agree with that Molly? yeah i don't think there's with peer pressure i don't really think there's an outright action i think it's the lack of that gets people so they might not actively be rude to you or do anything physically to you or like like physically like exclude you from their group but mm. they just won't invite you the next time they go somewhere it's like the lack of something they could do and i think that's what tends to get people more rather than them actively doing something so yeah i would agree with that. fair enough wow okay I, I think i definitely evolved from what from the concept that like you said nonsense that i had in my head of peer pressure i'm not gonna lie because okay um so personally then have you non so, especially in light of the fact that like you've been a Christian, I don't know, for how long would you say you've been a Christian um, for now? When you, do you mean as in like personally, I'd say solidly like a year or two. Okay. So in that time that you feel like you've personally kind of, you know, stepped into your faith, have you experienced any changes um, in terms of your interaction with people such that can be classified as peer pressure it may not have affected you in that you've actually done anything physically about it but have you felt any mm. peer pressure that has challenged your faith in the time that you have owned your faith mm. um i would say it's a form of peer pressure so um i would say it's more i've spoken about my faith to my friends like i've opened up and been like oh like i want to be close with god all of that then there might be a scenario where they'd make it just be like a joke they'd be like oh what would what would your God say about this? And it's it's like pressure in a sense of don't like don't open up and talk about that kind of thing because it's gonna get thrown back in your face. But I'd say I kind of I responded to it more in like a positive way. And I just tried to be like, oh, he'd, he'd say this, like I answered it genuinely. And I was just like, I felt like if if I didn't show, if I didn't back down, if I didn't let it get to me, then they will actually respect me. And I saw that they definitely respected me more and it actually went further and they were more intrigued and they actually started asking me questions and things like that. That's so good. You basically just flipped it on them. Yeah. <laughs> like they were trying to, yeah, they were trying to mock you and you said, but I have the answer. So, what, I mean, what next? I love that. Okay, Bolly, how about you? What um, would you say, or would you say you've experienced peer pressure that has challenged your faith at all? And how did you handle it? I would say, yes, I have. Um, for me, like getting stronger in my faith has been in more recent years, for instance, like Nonso said. Um, in the way that I've experienced peer pressure, it's kind of like what I've said before. I think it's more internal than anything. And it's definitely less of like an in-your-face active thing. So more recently, say it could be like at school or with school friends or anything. Um, my school friends are very different to I am. And 95% of them aren't Christian. They're like either agnostic or atheists. So in that kind of environment, obviously, which is very different to the values that I have and the faith that I am a part of, peer pressure in their sense would I guess I could say I'm lucky to say that I've never like overtly been peer pressured into anything but it could be something like if it's like a party setting or something I could be thinking if I don't do this or if I don't do what they want me to do I won't get invited to the next party and no one's said anything no one's get looked at me weird no one's had any like hostile body language but it's kind of like what I said earlier about it being an internal process so I think for me peer pressure is more of an internal thing. I've been in situations with people opposite to me and thought, if I did this, I might fit into this environment better. If I did this, I could be closer friends with these people, for example. So yeah, that's so, for me. Yeah, so in scenarios like that, have you had 
one or is there one that comes to mind? Do you remember how you handled it? Yeah, I think for me, how I handle it is, well, first of all, if you don't, if you know what's right, then you can do what's right. If you don't know what's right, then you're kind of stuck. So because luckily for me, I know what is right and I have that right there in my face. Mm. I kind of kept myself like grounded to my values. So I have been in that environment before. And what I like to do is forward thinking. So I think if I do this thing now, and it could even be tomorrow morning or in a week, and I look back, am I going to regret this? It's almost as simple as that for me. And almost like 10 times out of 10 or nine times out of 10, that works for me, doing that forward thinking and thinking, if I do this, am I going to regret this? Or am I going to feel bad? Or is this something that I'm going to have to ask God for forgiveness for? And yeah, that's generally something that will work for me. I really like that. I really like that, especially because it reminds me of a Bible verse that says, talks about like, we shouldn't do stuff just because we can. Um, there's a Bible verse that says all things are permissible, but not all things are expedient. And there's another one that talks about so us not sinning just because we know there's grace. Just like, oh, don't worry. Like, I'll just ask for forgiveness after. Like, that's not what grace is for. It's not just for us to be like, I'm going to take advantage of this because I know I'm going to be forgiven anyway. So I really like that whole thing of being forward thinking. But how about for somebody who maybe that's like you're you're going far they're just in the moment like and they're really just trying to address how they feel at that time like not so do you have anything you can advise or you can suggest as a practical way of resisting peer pressure when you're literally in that moment at that time without compromising your faith um at the start when i was i'd say less confident in my faith and i didn't want to be bold or like make a stand about it. One thing that I did was laugh it off. I felt like people made a comment or they pressured you and you just laugh. Like if if you, I feel like if you laugh it off, it kind of relaxes the situation a little bit. If you don't tense up and get serious, they're not going to see that and think, oh, okay, why are you not doing it? If you laugh it off, it's more, you've kind of disregarded it in a sense. And I'd say it depends on also the people you're around because if you're around your friends and they're really your friends, I'd say, obviously it's a cliche thing to say, but you be honest and open. You say I'm not comfortable. And I think it's something people are scared of is kind of changing the vibe of a conversation or ruining the mood. I mean, if yeah. if it's about you and being honest to yourself and doing what you're comfortable with and what you're not comfortable with, I definitely say sometimes you've got to ruin the vibe and I don't think it's a bad thing. Ah, okay. So in that, in that sense, you're saying sometimes you have to kill the vibe. Um, if you're not willing to kind of just, you know, not allow it to get to you, sometimes you need to open your mouth and actually just address it. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Thank you, guys. Okay. So in terms of that Bible verse that we talked about, Romans 12, verse 2, it was basically pitching two things against each other. It was pitching conforming to the world against being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, that is, it sounds nice, but I want to know what it, what it actually means. So renewing our minds to help us navigate peer pressure specifically what does that look like to you, Bolly? I think, sorry, Bolly, but, especially because yeah. you've spoken, spoken a lot about the internal and how mm. it's coming from within. So, you know, renewing your mind, that's an internal thing, right? So how do you think that renewing your mind concept can help you navigate peer pressure situations? I would say actually internalising everything that's being preached to you or everything that you're reading about. So say peer pressure is something you struggle with and you read Bible verses about it, you adults tell you about it if you're listening but you're not internalizing it then it's not actually helpful but i feel like for me in order to actually renew my mind i'm internalizing what i'm being told and what i'm being read and what i know is the right way and until you do that and actually adopt the mindset and not pretend to it's like okay i know what i should do but i still don't feel that type of way but until you actually like adopt what you know you should do and it genuinely feels right for you then i don't think that's the full renewal of your mind. I think your mind is fully renewed when you've internalized that new perspective mm. and then you can therefore use it in those situations. So I think that's what it would be for me to post. Okay. So basically you're saying there's a difference between head knowledge and kind of like heart knowledge, or there's a difference yeah. between knowing something and believing something. Yeah, and I feel like you have to believe it in order yeah. for your mind to be renewed. No, I hear it. Okay, Nonsa, what do you think? In terms of renewing your mind and how that, how we can, you know, use that to help us navigate peer pressure situations, what does that look like to you or what are your thoughts? Um, I'd say it's kind of, 
you kind of you obviously you have a new like perspective on things. So I say it's how you um, it like reflects in everything, which is how you talk in a conversation, your body language, everything. I'd say how you're responding to that scenario um, would be very different. I'd say you definitely, I'd, I'd say you'd probably be more reserved. You'd think more, you think, okay, this is not what I should be doing. And I definitely say, if, like Bolu said, if you've internalized it, it won't even feel right when you're doing it. Like you'll know deep down this is so very wrong and it won't sit right with you. So I think it will almost be involuntary not to do something. Like it, you, you would do something because it's so weird to you. I see. Okay. So when I hear the word renew, I think of like, let's say I, okay, this is probably old school now. I don't know if people still do this anymore. Does the libraries even exist anymore? I don't know. But like, if you get, I go get a library book and you renew your, renew the library book, right? Like you take it out for an extended period of time. So for me, renewing is like refreshing or like extending or topping up on something. Um, so I don't know, in terms of that, how do you put that in the context of what we're talking about in terms of peer pressure, if you agree at all with that whole concept of renewal? I would say what we already have as humans, like flesh alone, is just base knowledge. So okay. the renewal and the refreshing and the updating is what we get from the Bible or what we get from mentors and what like God's word. So I feel like our mind being renewed and for instance, like the metaphor you use of like the library book, we are maybe just a plain library book, but what is added to it is what we get from the Bible and like God's word and that advice. So I think that's how I'd apply that renewal to what we're still saying. It's kind of just like gaining more and like going to a different level. We have something, like we do have our own conscious and we do have our own instincts and you know, like internal voice that tells us what's right and wrong, but we can still build on it and we can still like add more to it. So that's why it's Do you want to add anything as well? I think fully worded it perfectly, actually. Yeah, no, fair enough. How about the concepts of faking it till you make it a little bit with peer pressure? In terms of the fact that, okay, listen, I'm new to my faith. Like, I need to, I need, just give me time. Just let me process this. I'm even still processing it. So is there not a little bit of faking it till I make it where it's just like, I'm going to just put into practice what I'm reading, even though, like, you know, I haven't fully, fully received it yet. Do you get, like, it's still a work in progress, but I'm going to just keep putting one foot in front of another and hoping I'm going to get there in the end. Do you not think there's an element of making it in terms of fiddling peer pressure as a Christian? i definitely say that's a massive part of it. I think that's, with most things, it's awkward, it's new, it's, you just take one step at a time until it's a habit. That's how you build the habit. You get into that repeated routine every time you say something then eventually before you know it, it'll be involuntary and you're just doing it. So definitely fake it till you make it. Okay. Bolly, do you agree? You don't have to. Yeah, no, I do. Honestly, okay. like, and when you were saying that, what the verse I was thinking of, like, faith without works is dead. I think if you have it in your mind and you know, okay, I could do this, this is how I get to this step, this step to this step, but actually doing it and actually, like, carrying it out is what brings that alive. And usually with most things the first time doing it is always the hardest and then once you've done it one time then from there like Nonso said it's almost just like involuntary like it's just something you want to do and it just becomes like a habit so yeah okay make it so you make it make it so you make it okay i mean just to sort of round us off and also just because you guys have sounded very philosophical it's giving socrates and plato right now so, <laughs> I need you guys to bring it back to 2023, Planet Earth. I want you guys to give me like maybe a story, a personal experience of how your faith has been challenged. So you, if you can literally even give me like the scenario, like what happened and maybe like how either your faith was strengthened as a result of it, or sometimes we have to just admit, sometimes we do take L, sometimes your faith was weakened as a result of it. So I want you to give me something, a little bit of reality, you know what I mean? So who has something pop into their mind first, something they remember, that they know that it affected their their faith in terms of peer pressure, either positively or negatively, just so we can keep it real. Um, I think, I think. Yeah. Um, so obviously I gave that example before, uh, mm -hmm. and this kind of relates to that. So um, it must have been, it was at school, 
I was talking to the teacher and um, I was with my friend and I must, the teacher must have asked me something, I must have lied. And now my friends come to me after. He was like, oh, what's, what's your God going to think of that? And then he was like, then he was kind of just saying, oh, if you're going to lie, just like lie all the time, what's the point in like basically feeling bad about it and all of that? And I kind of, it kind of sparked a really like good and productive and interesting conversation. And I kind of was like to him, obviously I'm not a perfect Christian and I'm growing and trying to be better. And I, at the start of the conversation, he was definitely trying to peer pressure, like towards just not caring. Like, he's just like, oh, it's just a lie. What, why does it matter? And I definitely say I held my ground on that one. And we spoke about, it, we had a conversation. Um, I wouldn't say I changed him or his philosophy, but I say I definitely opened his eyes and he was more like receptive to like the, the way I'm trying to be. Mm. You know what I love about that? I love the fact that like, you didn't try and defend yourself. You know what I mean? Like, I love how you were kind of like, yeah, but, and this is what I say all the time. I find it so confusing when people think Christians are perfect. So I, do, I understand, okay, that sometimes we can put up a, a certain front that like, listen, we live in the realms, like this world doesn't affect us. But I feel like being a Christian in and of itself is admittance of the fact that we are flawed. It's the very reason that we're like, we need a higher being. And so I love how you actually reference the fact that, listen, the reality that I'm living is actually because I am so flawed, I can't do it by myself. And I really love how you were able to bring those two things together that some people think are, is mutually exclusive. People think that you can't be imperfect and be a Christian, whereas the very essence of being a Christian is because you admit that you're imperfect. I love that so much. Bolu, can you think of anything that's happened for you? Yeah, for me, it's crazy because I feel like I have so many little scenarios and then I just have like these big fat ones where it's like, am I being pranked right now? Like, I'm looking for the camera in the room because it's just so in your face. Do you know what I mean? I think for me, the smaller ones is like with the school I'm at now, I have almost like no other Christians around me. So on a day to day basis, it's just like, for me, it's the opposite of not so. So for ra like rather than people picking up my imperfections and like you're supposed to be a christian it's kind of like a yeah bolu like like do you get what i mean you're finally like easing off your christianity like they're almost encouraging it rather than like picking at it if that makes sense so if for instance like i'm doing if i've done something that doesn't reflect my faith in the best possible way it's kind of like that's when i'm like gassed up the most so that's when I'm encouraged the most because they're like okay you're finally like letting loose a bit do you know what I mean so I think that's like the day-to-day -day kind of thing I think the biggest in your face one for me was last year around Halloween time and obviously like Halloween parties they're just a thing and in the house that I'm in someone had a magical idea of everyone dressing up as like a nun for the like for a Halloween party or whatever. And obviously the nun wouldn't be like the most modest of nuns, if you understand, like that's just what Halloween costumes are. And I remember sitting in the room and I'm thinking like, I'm like what I said, like where's the camera type thing? Because like, there's <laughs> someone waiting for me to react because everybody, know, like, everybody knows I'm a Christian. And then like part of me was like, oh, I just leave it. Like people be people. You're not going to go to the party anyway. And another part of me was like, bully, like can you stand up and speak? I think I kind of just found the middle ground. It's like what Nonso said earlier about laughing it off. There was some laughter, but there was also some like, guys, come on, like, let's not do that. That's not a good idea. While also not kind of making everything awkward and then making the situation like everybody feels uncomfortable type thing. So I think in that situation, if there's an option A and B, I took the C and I found the middle ground and I was kind of letting, like showing my beliefs, but also kind of having some, some kind of like compromise so what I'm saying will be understood because I feel like if I were to show my beliefs by standing up and being firm and saying, guys, that's offensive, don't do that. They're less likely to listen, especially with people who have opposite views to you. But I feel like if you kind of speak their language, then what you're saying is gonna go through more. So yeah, that was like my kind of in your face over situation that comes. Thank you both for sharing that. The last thing I just wanted to touch on was you both mentioned it, like the whole thing of things being awkward or uncomfortable. Basically, I feel like somebody's going to feel awkward in this situation. It's either you or them. But I feel like as Christians, a lot of time as young Christians, we'd rather it be us. About that, like, why, why is it you that needs to take the awkwardness or the discomfort? For like, um, especially in the early days, 
you feel like you have no leg to stand on. I say in our generation, Christianity is already quite, like people look to nitpick it, take it apart and hate on it. So until, you, until you're until you firm to the point you can withstand that, you rather not be questioned and embarrassed, like you think you're embarrassing yourself because you don't have all the answers or you say something incorrect. So I feel like, well, personally for me anyways, it was a lot easier to for me to take the awkwardness and firm it than try to speak out and then make myself look like a fool. Why, like, why we are choosing, basically, someone's going to feel awkward. It's either them or us. Why do we choose us all the time? And should we? Should we be choosing us all the time? I think, especially because you said the young Christians, at our age, like our generation, or maybe even the generation above, I don't know about millennials, but for Gen Z, I think, like, at this time of life, friends and your social life is, like, one of the biggest aspects of your life. So it's like you're willing to... I wouldn't say sacrifice more, but kind of like you're willing to let yourself feel that awkwardness as long as you're still in a good place socially. I think being a teenager or being a young adult and not having a good social life is very like impactful and detrimental. And you can almost tell when someone doesn't have a good social life because it takes a big toll on them. So I think being young and being our age, it feels so important to have a good social life that we are more willing to like just firm the awkwardness and firm being a little bit uncomfortable as long as everyone else still likes us or as long as we still have that group of friends if you get what i mean you know what i want us to end here not because it's a perfect note but exactly the opposite of that because it's not perfect note that has all the answers and that's literally our reality as young christians we're literally still just working it out every single day and that's what we want everyone to feel and to know that they're not alone like nobody has all the answers including us and we've discussed our thoughts and we've shared our opinions and you know maybe giving them some suggestions as well but we want people to know that it's not that everybody is going through some sort of growing pains in one way shape or form and truly we have the pillar which is god to lean on and there is literally no age we get to that will ever mean that we outgrow that and so that is literally a perfect place to end because you guys have given a reality a picture of the reality um as a young christian so i mean does anyone have any last words the only thing i'd say is obviously i think you worded it quite well and the only thing i'd add is um all the young christians are still growing so you know there's going to be bumps on the road but you've got to stand up and you know take every day at a time and build your relationship with god Thank you. Not Bolly, anything to say? Almost like repeating what you two have said, to be honest. We're still learning. We're Christians, not Christ. So mistakes can be, well, mistakes will be made almost inevitably. So you just have to like allow yourself to grow. And it's what you do after you make the mistake. That's what's really important. So, yeah. Yeah. And videos like this are here to help you not make the mistake in the first place because you know it's possible to withstand. So thank you everyone so much for joining us in our conversation. Bolu Nonso, thank you. You guys have been awesome. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Um, and that's it. We'll see you guys next time. Peace. Bye. Bye.